challenge called hex to decimal. If you're not familiar with hex, it's another number system like decimal, except it is base 16, whereas decimal is base 10. And you know binary probably as base 2. So obviously there aren't enough decimal digits to cover 16 values. So when you go from 0 up to 9, you start using six letters. You include A, B, C, D, E, and F. And in that way, you can cover uh, 16 or 15 distinct values for the base 16 numbering system. Feel free to uh, read a little bit about hex if that's not clear. Otherwise, we'll get on with it. You are to complete the function which converts a hex number given as a string to a decimal number. So we see that here, they're gonna pass in some string. We can check this out in the tests below. Like one, remember I said A is a valid hex character, any letter A through F. So double F is also valid, C is valid. Um, it's gonna come in as a string and they expect us to output these integer values. So go ahead and pause the video and take a stab at that and then resume when you're ready. So your best bet is to go looking for some kind of helper methods that are built in. As you can imagine, this kind of thing happens a lot, so it's covered by built-in libraries. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, just to help, I'm going to do a print statement saying what the input is. Hex string, okay. Then I'm going to do uh, some parameter validation, even though they don't really say to do that. The string class has this very handy method called is null or empty. And this will be true if the input is null, meaning it's not there at all, or if it's an empty string, which is just the, it's like this. You know, normally you'd have some kind of uh, text in here. Empty string is like that. So it's basically like you don't have any input. And if we have that, I'll just generically say, throw some exception, but you deal with it however you actually want to. So at this point though, we know that we have some kind of characters here. Good, that's a good start. When I went about solving this, um, I was looking at a couple, I was looking up some methods to do this and I really wanted to make this one work. It looks pretty good, right? The N32 class is parsing a string. Uh, they use the 82 example here. And then you're specifying a hex number. They have some enums for number styles. And I, I really wanted to make that one work. I ran into trouble with the negative sign here. So um, I ended up kind of making my own solution and using less of the built-in stuff. I still will use something, another class, uh, this convert class. Um, notice that you can convert to an integer um, based on a string value that you pass in, and then you get to specify the base. And the from base is 2, 8, 10, or 16, the common ones, where it'd be binary, octal, decimal, hexadecimal. So I'll end up using that, but yeah, I was a little bummed because of this weird input. So won't be doing that. To cover this um, case where we have a negative hexadecimal value specified with a sign and not on the actual number itself. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to make a little flag here. Bool is negative, right? I know this string is not empty at this point, so I'll I can say if the first character of it, right, index zero is the first string, if that's equal to a minus sign, then I know I'm dealing with a negative value. So this will be helpful later. And then my idea is to, if it is negative, sort of omit that negative sign. Start with uh, the second character and take the rest instead of including the negative sign. So. I can get the 
the magnitude of the number first and then I'll apply the sign back on at the end. Uh, if, if you guys come up with a way to make it work without doing this extra work, by all means drop that in the comments. We'll probably see something when we submit our answer too. So uh, to that end, I'm going to make a start index, right? We're either gonna start for the, from the beginning or uh, one index position forward if we wanna skip over that, that um, negative sign. So, okay. Is negative. And then I'll say if is negative, we can set hit start index. You know what? Let's even just do the ternary operator like we've been doing. I think that works pretty well here. Is negative question mark. If it is, then make start index one, else make it at the very beginning. Okay. Uh, I think we're good there. And then finally, I'll use that method from the convert class. Feel free to look this one up on the doc page if you want. I went to the convert class, opened up methods, and there's one to in 32. That's the common integer size, 32 bits. They have 16 bits, 64 bits. But yeah, I'm using the in 32 one where we give it our input string and specify the base. So. Uh, with that, you know what, I can even, one thing I can do, where'd my example go, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so int, I'll say the int value from the string uh, is convert, and before I get too far in. Let's go ahead and add our using system. So we'll cover, we need this for the console right line as well. Uh, and then it was 2 int 32. It took a string, which was provided to us, and we're going to use 16 because we're, we want a hexadecimal value, right? So that should uh, convert for us. We'll get the proper number, the magnitude, and the only issue left then is if this was a negative number. We stripped it if necessary here, so whatever value we have at this point is positive. So we gotta go ahead and convert it back to negative if necessary. So we could say, um, if is negative, return int val times negative one, right? Otherwise, just return infel. There was no extra processing needed. And so I think this should cover us. Let's give it a test. Error, cannot convert method, is null or empty? Oh, sure. Uh, so you actually have to give it input, right? I called this method, but uh, I didn't give it anything to check. So let's pass our hex string value to that. Okay. Uh, our, uh, system exception. Let's go to stack trace, see if that helps us. And they didn't give us. Oh, right. Yeah. So we made the start index, right? But I didn't actually apply it. So um, let's do that. Instead of just unconditionally passing, using the hex strings total value, I want to say, remember substring from our other challenge, and then hit start index. And recall there were overloads for this. If you give it just one value, it tells you where to start from, and it just takes all the remaining characters in the word. Otherwise, you could specify a second parameter saying how many characters you wanted to grab, but we want everything going to the end. So um, that should actually work with the numerical portion of our input. Let's try that. 
Okay, that looks better. So yeah, we'll run the large collection. Hopefully more green. Awesome, looks green. So, um, yeah, you saw our inputs being printed out there. Maybe that was helpful. I'll remove it now, not really necessary. And then we'll have to t hit attempt again because we modified and we have the green light to submit. So I'll go ahead and submit like this. We'll see what kind of uh, shorthand stuff people came up with. Convert to int, uh, hex, trim start. Okay, so they trimmed the minus sign from the beginning of the input like we did, but a nice um, compact one line version of that. And then they said, multiply your answer if uh, by, if there were a negative sign, then do it by negative one. Otherwise multiply it by one, you know? We didn't do that extra by one multiplication, which is unnecessary, but they had a nice compact way of writing this, so that's cool. Um, we had replace, uh, the minus sign with nothing, and then they're checking again if it exists. Um, again, I liked how we did it where we just check once, make a flag, it is negative or it's not. You can use that as many times as you want. Multiply by negative one if necessary. Same kind of thing. So yeah, okay, pretty similar stuff. Cool. Looks good. Yeah, hit me up with whatever you came up with or questions, and we'll go on to the next challenge. Thanks for watching.